I'm so glad you joined me today. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about using Anchor for your podcast. You need to know that there's some pros and there's some cons. So thanks for joining me today. If this is your first time here, my name is Eileen and you can actually find me over on Anchor at anchor.fm slash Eileen. That's I-L-E-A-N-E. -E. And today I want to talk to you about the pros and cons of using Anchor for your podcast. I got to tell you guys, I have been having a ton of fun over on Anchor. Anchor is a really active and engaging platform where you can start to build a podcast. You can uh, post five minute segments. If you want, you can add background music. They have a selection of about 20 tracks. I want to take a second to say hi to my friend Tish. I see she's here. Hey, Tish, how are you? Great to see you today, as always, my dear. And we're going to have some hashtag Eileen fun. And so you can post the five minute segments. Like I said, you have about 20 different background tracks to choose from. And I see Larry Snow is here and Barb T is here as well. So let me just take a minute guys to share the chat room with you since uh, all of my friends are coming in and I always like to give a shout out and give some props to the folks that are here. Hi, 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 Barb T, Larry Snow and Tish Rosales. Okay. So let me get back to talking a little bit more about Anchor. Like I said, you can add those background tracks to your voice if you wish. The um, choices are you can do like an upbeat kind of music. You can do a, a mellow, laid back type of music. And my friend Dave Jackson from the School of Podcasting is in the house. Hey, Dave, how are you? Um, Dave? Don't um, get ahead of me. Don't rush me. I said this is pros and cons. Can I talk about the cons first? <laughs> I mean, the pros first. I'm sorry. Dave threw me off, guys. I'm going to talk about the pros first. And then even after I talk about the cons, I'm going to give you a workaround because you need to have a backup plan. Okay? So, so let's get back into it. All right. So you can also call in to other people's stations. So not just can you create that content for yourself with five minute segments, which can be later strung together. If you want to create an even longer podcast episode, they can all be added up together, but people can call into your station. They can ask you questions. They can respond to your question. They can give you feedback. They can just say hi. They have a one minute window of recording. Now, what I find with sites, just like even here on YouTube, Facebook, there's always people who are just a little timid and they are not ready to actually broadcast themselves, but they want to contribute. They want to be part of the community. Well, one thing that Anchor has launched is the ability to have discussions, which is basically a commenting board within each of your episodes. And if you like the comment or if the comment is really adding to the segment that you just recorded, you can click a button and that comment will pop up and it'll be a timed pop-up that'll come up so that when people are listening to your segments, they'll see that this comment came up that maybe that person said, Hey, I agree with you. Or, you know, you make a good point or, you know, have you thought about the other side? So whatever they're saying. So this is a great opportunity. And this is one of the reasons why I really like the platform because it's an opportunity for folks who are just a little shy and they just haven't come out of their shell yet, or for whatever reason, they decide that they're not ready to comment. Like for example, today, um, in case you haven't noticed, is 
Hashtag super cute Saturday, right? So I was in the hair salon this morning. There was a bunch of kids in there. The salon was really full today. And I was listening to some segments. And there was a girl who was kind of new to the platform. And she was saying, I really wish you would call in and tell me what you think about the platform. But I couldn't call in. But I could leave her a comment and say, hey, I can't call in right now because it's noisy here, but I will call in later. And I did eventually when I got home, I called in to her station. So it's, it's, it's a really, it's a neat platform. It's really a social media platform. It's all the things that you really wish Twitter could be in terms of engagement and conversation. Yeah, there's that. <laughs> you have what they call a carousel. And you know what? I'm going to really quickly see who else has just arrived over in the comment section. And then I'm going to take you over to the platform really quickly as well. So let's go over and see who else is here and read some more of the comments. Okay. So Dave apologized for trying to rush me. <laughs> And my hashtag ologist, uh, Tish, has given me the Eileen Super Cute Saturday thing. Okay, so we got all the folks here. I'm, I must have got Dave's attention. I'm not sure how I got his attention, but Dave Jackson is in the house. Okay, so now let's just take a look at the platform really quickly. So here is what we call the carousel, all right? I'm on the home page and I can scroll around. These are all the stations that I've favorited. So we're not going to listen to anybody's station right now. But one of the neat things that I like about it is down at the bottom, you see the blue little dot that's right next to the bell. That's where you click on. You'll see all the notifications. People have applauded. That's another thing, another way that people can give you feedback. They can just clap. You know, remember Blab? Right. When you could give somebody props, you just tap on the screen. And so they kind of brought that back as well. And, you know, you'll also see when people have commented. All right. There's applause. Let's see. That's great. Somebody sat there. Now I see that Rachel has come over and listened to just about everything I posted in the last 24 hours because your station stays active for 24 hours. If you wanted to stay longer, you make it an episode, which would be your podcast. Okay, so here's people applauding, commenting, calling in. Now, the call-ins is a feature that you'll see right here where there's the plus symbol. Oh, there's my girl, Tachi. I definitely got to give her a shout out. Hey, Tachi. <laughs> she listened to all my stuff and gave me a nice comments and applause. Now, here's where you can do an interview. That's another topic that we'll cover later on. I don't want to spend too much time on that right now. You can add music tracks. Those would be from your phone, the Spotify or the Apple um, music that you have on your phone. And interludes are just little, um, I guess you could just call them little clips. And here's where my list of call-ins, where people have called in, left me messages. See, for example, my friend Simon, he let, he let me know right up front, this is private. This is just between you and I. So this way you can communicate with someone and it could just be a private conversation. In fact, uh, there's one girl, and you guys know her, Antoinette. She's in my Facebook group. Uh, she is the Delaware blogger. I'm going to stop the screen share. She and I, we, you know, we have this connection, but we hardly ever really talk. But we've been almost like talking on the phone with going back and forth with our anchor conversations, even though others are listening in as well. But we're like, hey, girl, what are you up to this weekend? And, you know, we just going back and forth with banter. So it's a fantastic social network. When you've decided that now I've recorded all these segments, just give you a little bit of the lingo. You've got your five minute segments. You've got your one minute call lens. Maybe you threw in an interlude or two here or there. Then you can take those segments and turn them into an episode for your podcast. Now, 
one more thing is the web clipper and I showed the web clipper before but I just want to do it really quickly because I think those web clipper is another thing that really sets anchor apart in terms of the things that you can do with your content all right so first what I needed to do was turn down the volume which I forgot to do but I did that just now so here's the web clipper now because I'm logged in already if I have audio on my computer I can upload audio so I can upload up to a five minute track and add it into my broadcast that can be not just a pre-recorded clip from maybe I did a Facebook live or I did uh, you know an Instagram story or a periscope or something and I have it saved on my computer now I can repurpose that content it can even be an old episode of the podcast but just remember five minute segments however when you use that web clipper it really seamlessly ties those segments together so that even if you wanted to add a background track so you upload this let's say you had a 15 minute piece of audio you upload it you drag the clipper into five minute segments you can add that background music if you want and then when it plays back it plays back seamlessly like a 15 minute segment so the five minute limitation is only when you're on your phone okay and also a lot of times you want to just keep your station going you want to engage people you can use the scheduler because like I said, your segments will go away after 24 hours. People won't be able to hear them. Your episodes will be there, but your segments go away after 24 hours. So you just wanna make sure your station stays active. You can use the scheduling feature. You can also pull in videos and it will extract the audio. You can also use a URL of a YouTube video. I mean, really, that web clipper is dynamite. That's a whole video all in itself in fact I've done a couple videos about the web clipper I just didn't post them up on YouTube so if you want them just let me know leave a comment if you're watching this in a replay so really quickly before I move into the cons and I give you the workaround <clears throat> my voice cracked and I give you the workaround let me go over to the chat that'll also give me a chance to take a sip of water <laughs> and I know Dave Jackson is over there biting his tongue just be patient mr. Jackson I'm gonna get to the cons in a minute <laughs> all right so let's see what we have here okay uh, anchor is more social than most mainstream networks absolutely and it's still relatively small which I like exactly it's still relatively small Larry is another reason why I like it it's easy like I'm in the top 100 and uh, one day I didn't post that much and I was back into the top 500 and I was like oh no let me get back up there <laughs> uh, okay and then uh, Barb is saying Tish oh just saying hi to everyone Tish is saying great Larry I'll listen to your segment I didn't hear Larry post a segment yet but we're gonna get him in there this is what I should follow for my company theme song right and you mentioned blab and we know how that ended it was free too. <laughs> yes 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 but with that said and I'm glad you said that Dave because guess what almost everyone in this room now with the exception of Dave Jackson I met on blab so platforms do not keep us from each other when we want to be connected with each other am I right so if there's a platform where you can go out there and Dave always says find your target audience and go where they are right so if you know your target audience may be hanging out on anchor don't worry about whether they're going to shut down or not because they probably will one day if they don't do a monetization really quickly I think they're smart enough that they have a monetization figured out and that's going to be part of my cons and I guess that's my segue to get over there but before I do that and since Dave told me to preach I'm going to preach and we're in we're in YouTube church right Stish? <laughs> where's my hashtag uh, the the platforms do not define the relationships that you make 
Okay. Like for example, I'm going to give everybody an example that you can really relate to. Cause a lot of people probably is like, well, I never thought anything of blab anyway, but what about Google plus Google plus used to be a super thriving community over there and it's still there. And you know what? I think Google just can't let it go because they just know how many people just have so much invested in it but there are still really thriving niche communities over there. But those folks are hopefully that they're, they know that the best thing they can do is also make sure they're connected with people. In other words, you know, build your email list and all that. A lot of people don't want to be bothered with emails, but you've got Facebook. We hopefully that's not going away. I've got YouTube. Thank you, YouTube. <laughs> So Google's not all bad, but all, my point here is don't let the platform or the fact that you think the platform might go away, stop you because I'm going to tell you what you need to do to future proof yourself and your content, future proof your content. Okay. So that you don't have to worry. Let them shut down. They can shut down all they want. Bye. It was fun. Have a nice life. Right. Okay, so now we got to get into the cons. Shush, for Dave Jackson <laughs> has a fit over there. <laughs> okay, so here we go. The number one con, and uh, oh, uh, for this, I'm going to go back to the screen share really quickly because I want you to see what happens when you're on my anchor page. Let's go back to my anchor homepage, okay? Now, let me give you a look. Sorry. <laughs> so it tells people, okay, if people come to my anchor.fm slash Eileen page, it tells people that they can start their own. They can, because the app is on iPhone and it's on Android. Okay. And on also iPad and all that, every iDevice. If you want to listen to my podcast, you can listen to it on Apple Podcasts and on the uh, Google Play Music, all right? Now, you'll probably get more listeners on Apple, but then again, you'll never know, because guess what you don't get? You don't get those stats. And the reason you won't get those stats is because Anchor, in essence, has submitted your podcast to iTunes. So you say, okay, well, that's good, fun. I, I was hoping somebody would submit my podcast to iTunes, right? <laughs> because submitting a podcast to iTunes, that sounds like a really hard and technical thing, right? But the thing is, when they submit that podcast to iTunes, there's a little thing uh, with iTunes that connects you to your show, and that's your email address. That's the way that Apple has to get in touch with you as the owner of the podcast. But because you're not submitting the podcast, Anchor is, so that podcast, in essence, belongs to them. And yes, you're using their platform to create the content. You really, you can't do it without them, right? But by the same token, you also can't go in there if you want to um, make changes. You do have to go through Anchor. And when Apple releases those stats that they're going to release in the fall with the next version of iOS and all that, you won't get access to those stats because the show is literally owned by Anchor. Okay, so that's something to think about. Now, like I said, this is pros and cons. So for those of you who never had a podcast, who were completely afraid of the tech and were like, oh my God, I got to do record, then I, what's an RSS feed? I don't, what? I can't do a podcast. And then you found Anchor and you're like, wait. All I got to do is talk into the thing and then tell them to submit it. Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> Great. This is fantastic because this get, getting you your first podcast 
is getting you the uh, away from the tech. It's making it so that you don't have to worry about the tech at all. All you have to do is have an image and upload it to your profile and type in a name for your show. That's it. No, and record your episodes. <laughs> okay, so wait, I have more cons, but I see the chat moving, so I better check in and see. Uh, I got a feeling that there's some comments going on over there that may add to this conversation. Okay, so <laughs> uh, my hashtagologist, which is Tish, has given me a, a hashtag anchors away. Eileen anchors away. Dave, I don't want to rush you. If there are more pros, keep them coming. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, Larry, wait a minute. Okay. I'm sorry. I got to go back. Right. Here we go. I'm curious, concerned about copyright issues with bringing in someone else's YouTube content on Anchor. Okay. Good point, Larry. I, oh, let's do, let's address that one right now. Uh, there's no problem with bringing the content in on Anchor for people on Anchor to listen to the content. It's just like you post a YouTube link on Twitter. You're sharing it for people to listen to it on the app. Does that mean you can add it as an episode of your podcast? Not, I, mm -mm, nope. It doesn't give you the opportunity to do that. Now the app may allow you to do that, but that doesn't mean that Apple's not going to kick you out of iTunes. So with a podcast, you need to know that the material needs to be your material. Now, somebody calls into your station, they're giving you that content. Because the folks that are on Anchor know that when you do a call in, if you're giving that content to that creator and that everybody's on there to create podcasts. Well, some people don't create podcasts, but in general, that's the point of it is to create a podcast. So it's just like when you're being interviewed on somebody's show, you know that you gave them that content. So I play YouTube videos. You know, I use the YouTube link and pull in that entire video from the web clipper, but I would never post that on my podcast. That's just a segment, not an episode, a segment for the people who are on Anchor to listen to. Now, if someone else goes and does that and puts it up on iTunes or Google Play, then more than likely their podcast, they'll, I don't know if they'll get a nasty letter over at Anchor, because remember, that person won't have that connection with Apple. Apple won't know that is Jane Doe. They may send uh, Anchor a nasty gram. I don't know how... That's the other thing about giving up control. That's another one of the cons. But you don't have to worry about just playing the music for people who are listening to it on the app. Because like I said, that's just like sharing it on Facebook, sharing it on Twitter. What's the difference, right? Okay, so that was a great question. Larry always has, he's so thoughtful. Love him to pieces. Okay. And Larry says, I use anger to repurpose my content. So I'm not worried about my content disappearing. Wonderful. That's part of the workaround, Larry, but I'm doing it the other way around. Okay. So wait, hang on for a second. Oh, the King of Blazes is here too. Okay. Um, Dave said he didn't want to rush me. And if I had more pros and I, I'm going to have more pros too, Dave, I, I guess as this conversation goes along, anger is exploding in a good way. If anybody wants to come in the room, let me know. And I am connected with most of you guys over on Facebook. I will send you the link. Anchor is exploding in a good way. They are constantly working with providers to get your content out there in this wacky world of web. <laughs> That's right. You know, um, Anchor is exploding right now because of, there's a lot of venture capitalists and, and other influencers that are over there. So and now's the time. Strike while the iron is hot. You can always get over there. If you don't like it, leave. You're saying Anchor TOS says they exclusively own show content. I, Barb, you are the TOS expert. <laughs> I'm not. 
I, I'm, and I'm not saying that they own your content. So let me be clear about that. I'm saying they own your show. They own that connection between you, between the iTunes and your content or between Apple podcasts and your content. Cause they're not going to give you their email address and they're not going to say, Oh, you know what? Um, Apple podcasts, let me change the email address on that one account. It should really go to Barb T. I'm not going to do that. Okay. Cause that's not their point. One of the, the other cons, cause let me move on to the next con is that there is a pre-roll and post roll advertisement. So like Dave asked me earlier about um, them. Well, he didn't ask me, but he mentioned about them not having a monetization strategy. So if you listen to my podcast, the one that comes through anchor at the beginning of that, you'll hear this very nice sounding fellow that says the podcast or the content you're about to listen to was recorded on anchor anchor is the easy way to blah, 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 It's 15 seconds. It says the same thing at the end, or maybe it's, they tweak it a little at the end. So of course I don't like that, <laughs> but Hey, it's the price I would pay if that was the podcast that I'm promoting. And if I'm putting all my eggs in one basket with anchor, that would be the price that I pay would be the fact that if their commercials playing. So this, here's the other thing. There's absolutely nothing stopping them from putting commercials inside of your content. Once your uh, podcast is up and running, what are you going to do? Say, Oh no, I'm going to move. Well, they did say, cause someone did ask about this ownership. Thing. Of course, that piece comes up and there's a community manager and she said, just send us an email and we will send you your RSS feed or something to that effect. I can't, I can't remember the exact wording. Okay. But <laughs> the bottom line is there's nothing stopping them from putting other ads inserted in your content. Okay. So be prepared for that. And I think if you're prepared for that, you, you should be okay with it because you're not paying them to host your content. I mean, there's a reason why Lipson and Blueberry and all these other uh, podcast hosts, Spreaker, I have to say Spreaker because I actually use a Spreaker. Uh, you know, there's a reason why they charge because they have to pay for hosting servers that's not cheap or free anywhere. Okay. So that's one of the cons. So I just, I think that as long as you are informed and this is my goal here with this, this video today is for you to be informed. And if you're informed, then you can make an informed decision about what you want to do. And I'm going to get to the work around, but I think I have one more con written on my sheet over here while I'm looking at that. Let me put up the chat. Let's see so that you guys can see you all can see what every each other is saying but i want my replay viewers to see as well and hi king of blazes uh doesn't know what anchor is it's a podcasting app that's the best quickest way for me to describe it and um i think someone else already told him that i think i'm too young to understand all of this it's so, okay king of blazes just sit there and just absorb honey because when the time comes you're going to be like ah i remember miss eileen was talking about that let me go over to her youtube channel now i get it they own the listing distribution on apple as an anchor show but can't we upload separately to itunes if that is what we wanted to do Absolutely. That's part of the workaround, Barb. Why y'all keep trying to get ahead of me? <laughs> Thanks, Dave. We're thinking on the same lines. If you would join Eileen, I, I will come in with you, Dave. Would love to have healthy discussion. Yes. Uh, did Dave say he wanted to, Barb, if this was radio, they would own your transmitter. Okay, Dave, every time I send you a um, Facebook messenger, you don't get it or you don't respond to it. So I'm going to try again. Let's get some seats distributed here. 
uh, because I think this is um, a really good topic. I would really love to hear Dave's, and I have to stop screen sharing in order to get to that link. Ha ha. Okay, so um, anybody who's watching this in the replay, just bear with me for one moment. I want to get some links out here to my friends here. And, uh, you know, just be camera ready. And of course, it doesn't do it that the way I want it to do it. To send you a message, I have to click on it again and then click on it again because, you know, that's just how that is. And then the screen is not. Talk. Okay, we'll start with Dave. And Barb, I don't know why you said you wouldn't come in unless Dave is coming in. So you're saying you wouldn't want to come in without Dave? That's. I feel some type of way about that. Well, I guess I'm going to send Larry his invitation next. I don't know if Larry, I don't know if you're available to come in or not, but I'm sending you the invite. Anywho, and uh, let's see what the conversation is going over. I'm um, old email. Okay, well, can you check Messenger just to get that invitation? If they're TOS, they own your content to use at will under license grant. Okay. And, all right. See? Come on, Dave. You're longer than we get on the ball. <laughs> I'm not knowledgeable enough to discuss podcasting. Okay. And Tish, uh, Tish, you could always join me. Don't think that I am ignoring the fact that you're here because I know you normally don't come on, but you never know. I don't want you to think that uh, I will overlook you. You have the option. You just say, send it. And uh, Dave, off the top of my head, I'm going to say that your email is dave at schoolofpodcasting.com. I'm going to try that one. And um, and I know you uh, have, I have a connection with you over on Patreon, but that's going to be just a little too hard for me to find right now. Dave at... Oh, wait, it's coming in. Yes, you do have that as an email. So here's the link, Dave, over at Dave at school of podcasting.com. Okay, cool. All right, so let's get back over there. And uh, let's see what else. All right, thanks for bearing with me, everyone. And let me see what's the other thing. Oh, I did mention, oh, Dave, you're here already. Hi. Oh, can you say something, Dave? There we go. Oh, okay. Hi. Hi. Hey, <laughs> what did you want to say? Let me let you just get it all out right now. This is Dave Jackson from the School of Podcasting and Ask the Podcast well, well, Coach. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just worried because, A, they're not bringing in any money. Um, and we've seen, I mean, SoundCloud was charging $15 a month and they're almost out of business. We don't know. They might get saved. We'll see. Um, but my big thing is the, the lack of control. Like if I wanted to change an episode, I, I want to upload something else because I had, I, I don't see where I can fix my mistakes. I don't see where I can fix my artwork. Um, and then just the, the fact that if, you know, I hate always worst case scenario, but if I wanted to leave, when I emailed them, it took them 20 days to get back to me to say, yes, we can redirect your feed. So that's good that you can redirect your feed if you want to leave. So that makes me feel much better mm -hmm. because I would hate to see somebody put all their eggs in this basket. And then, you know, if it did go away, you would then lose all your subscribers and you got to tell everybody, okay, I'm over on this new bright, shiny thing over here now. And you're going to lose your subscribers that way, some of them at least. So that was my biggest worry. So it's just the fact that I didn't have a whole lot of control. Okay. So hang on one second. Facebook does this weird thing when you're opening up, if you have multiple messengers open. Anyway, I don't want to get off into what Facebook is doing wrong. You can easily change your artwork because basically your artwork is your profile picture. Oh. So, I mean, so it's not really the true iTunes specs that we're used to. So let me do a screen share real quick. Um, See, oh, that, okay. makes me, that makes me nervous because as a tech support person for Libsyn, so we should make that out there. Okay, I'm, I, I work for the competition. <laughs> but um, I've seen where people's stuff won't update properly because they don't have the right artwork sizes. 
Well, oh. they're pulling it from the app. Okay. So, you know, I, I wasn't, I was a little concerned about that. So let me make mine big. So you can see, I just pulled something that was on my phone. In fact, that was from my birthday in 2016. And um, I just pulled that in when I set up my profile on Anchor. And so there, of course, I could have stylized it with, you know, my logo or something like that if I wanted to. But see whose logo is there? Let me, in fact, let me make that bigger because yeah. you guys might not be able to see that. At the bottom right is the Anchor logo. See that little white? Sorry, that's my sharing tool that keeps popping up there. If you see that little white circle there, that's the Anchor logo. And it even says by Eileen Smith slash Anchor. Okay, so even though it's my podcast and it's got my name there, it's slash Anchor. All right, so and oh, it was that you? Bar no, that was me. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I'm playing with my anchor as we speak. Okay. All right. Okay. Hi, Barb. Hi. So I'm glad to have both of you in here because I I love your audience, what you're drawing, Eileen, and I love Dave's knowledge base in podcasting. And like you, like you said about going where your audience is, we all agree with that. And I'm watching these statistics that I'm pulling from Facebook and what's happening there. And we know about reluctancy to actually get on cam for one thing, but also we're moving two, two to three generations to the phone. We're, we're moving the silence, the boomers, and the older Gen Xers to actually use their phone as a primary device. And so we're all radio based. We're you know on the go, it's listening. And even today, like I streamed live cast on video over via Google Chrome to a large scale television that has a large speaker just so I could keep on doing what I was doing. I was listening. I wasn't watching. Unless there was something really, hey, Krishna said, look at this, you know, then I would go and look at it. So I think there's a real need for this. And I think being on the ground floor is also good. And if it's, again, the point and click, making it as easy as possible to get rolling. But the thing is, I thought that iTunes was very difficult to get because I haven't paid attention. And that's why I want Dave in the box. <laughs> I thought it was very difficult anymore to really get your listing on iTunes. It's become so full of content that it's harder as an individual to get noticed just in general. And so question, is that true or false? Um, because being affiliated with someone else who has deeper or, or some entity that has deeper pockets, even if they go under, you can say that you are a broadcaster with Anchor, you know, and so you can turn that around and actually use that as a marketing tool if your broadcast went beyond just your experimenting, your testing, or just your communicating and building community through Anchor at this stage right now. But doesn't that, isn't that kind of like saying I was a violinist on the Titanic? Everybody remembers the Titanic, don't they? Well, but not, <laughs> not for good reason. Though. But it's thing. all about turning it around. In that day and age, Titanic didn't have good marketing people. So <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you mentioned Are we being, going down or is it our time? Well, you, <laughs> you, you mentioned being found in iTunes. This is just a different door into iTunes. You're still going into right. the crowded space. So, right. And you're going to hope that based on Anchor's marketing plan, that they bring a whole bunch of people over here to hear you over here where they then get to hear the pre-roll and the post-roll. Um, well, yes, you're absolutely right. So, so they have deeper pockets. You've pointed, uh, Eileen has pointed out venture capital. You've pointed your concern about the, how deep those pockets are. But they have deeper pockets than each of us as individuals. And they've got their brand going out on all those uh, broadcasts that are going from Anchor. And some of them are really exceptional. 
So uh, not necessarily any one of us, but we can jump on the bandwagon. I mean, uh, as a for instance, I mean, it's, it's not that he's there or, I, or that I even know he's there, but I mean, John Lee Dumas, if, if he actually had a channel on there, it's like he was affiliated with it. I mean, Fanzo is even, he's drawn a very large crowd. He is on there. So those folks, because they're marketing themselves separately and they're saying, you can catch me on Anchor, yeah, that I, carries more weight. Yeah, my own there's a lot of YouTubers over there as well. Tim Schmoyer's there, yeah. Roberto Blake is there. Okay. And really quickly, Dave, I know you had something to say, but I have to say hi, hi, hi to Larry Snow. Hey, Larry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But are, are those those people are using Anchor as a secondary platform, right? They're not using it as their main platform. Co correct. And this is my yeah. point for this video. I just didn't get to that yet because I okay. wanted you guys to talk. <laughs> yeah, that's that's I just wouldn't I, I'm not anti Anchor. I'm I'm not I'm not sold on using it as I'm gonna put this this is my house. I'm gonna build this as the this is the basement that I build on. I'm like, no. But 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 Dave and not to play devil's advocate. Oh, please do this is fun. Do. <laughs> for someone who was completely intimidated yeah. to ever start a podcast, they don't have, they may not have a business. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. Mm -hmm. Okay. They've always wanted a podcast. They've always wanted to be empowered by being able to say whatever they want to say on the air. I still think that it's better than them not podcasting at all. I and totally agree. That people are completely afraid of the whole RSS feed thing. Mm -hmm. Apple doesn't make it easy at all. It, well, in my opinion, they, they make it easy for geeks like us. easier <laughs> you know like you probably could sign up for itunes in your sleep okay but for someone who is just like podcast that sounds like ooh, super complicated oh i have to have a rs well what is that how do i do it you know so for that person i think this is a perfect solution and i think and there is so many people that are uh, visually impaired using this app too. That's another reason why I really like it because I'm listening to people and, and I'm saying, let me just go to their profile and then let me just check them and I'll see they may even have it in their profile or something that they say, or they'll click through to their website and I'll see they're visually impaired. And I'm like, I've seen more visually impaired people or I've heard them over on anchor than i've seen the whole time of course they don't do live streaming most of them some do i'm not saying that that should hold people back but i know it does so for them to be empowered now this is why i started with the pros but i do want to let those folks that are like now the, i'm putting all i'm leaving Libsyn because they have an import feature now to leave soundcloud and Actually, on that page, it says, Leave, bring your SoundCloud or Lipson podcast and import it. I don't know why they didn't mention Blueberry, but anyway, and import it into now for SoundCloud. I would say, Yes, you're just as good. SoundCloud, um, I would say, Leave right now and go over to Anchor if that's what you want to do. You want to do it for free. But <laughs> I, I, would, I, would, I would go to Wooshka before I went to anchor <laughs> well but I, it's not as easy over there that's the bad news. yeah yeah <laughs> you know but for for um for someone who just doesn't want to deal with any of the tech and but yet wants to have a podcast i think this could be very empowering and i'm definitely seeing a lot of people that did not have any type of podcast before that are now using now all of the more savvy tech savvy folks that are over there know that yes this is a backup this is a place that you may want to repurpose i like to use it and i'm going to get to my work around now this is the time has come <laughs> i like to use it to create the episode because i can bring in the voices of other people i can have that dialogue that conversation it starts usually with a question someone's called in and asked me a question now once that podcast i made my podcast like i did this yesterday i had a question i gave an answer i brought in a clip i brought in did another segment another question came in i responded to that question and then i wrapped it up 
right? Posted that podcast, took it from iTunes, used QuickTime, trimmed off. This has been recorded in Anchor, trimmed off at the end. This has been recorded in Anchor and boom, uploaded to Lipson. My podcast, I have been on hiatus since March of 2016. And now I've got two episodes in my feed that weren't there before. <laughs> you know, people were probably, lo I'd lost them anyway. But at least now I have an easy way to record. And with using that web clipper, when I do decide that, yeah, I want to have a little bit better quality, I'm going to sit at my ATR 2100 and I, or I want to add some music that I own the rights to, mm -hmm. I can add that in and I can do that right through the app. And I don't even have to go and listen and check my stats because I know who's listening to it on Anchor. Yeah. So I know the people that are listening. This is one thing that I loved about Blab. When you were finished with your show, you can see exactly who watched. Now, I don't know how long they listened. I don't know all that stuff. That's always mm -hmm. going to be a mystery in podcasting, I think. <laughs> but at least I know when they're giving me applause, they're leaving comments, and they're re-echoing my segments. That's another thing that I forgot to mention as a pro. Remember I said there was another pro? Somebody can echo your segment. So that means that they're putting your segment out there. It's just like a retweet. That segment now is going out to their audience. And this is how you get new users. Yeah. And I know Larry still hasn't said anything, but this chat is just scrolling right along. So something must be being said over there. I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, and Carla's here. Hey, Carla, Andrew's here. Unfortunately, most of us who want to get on air and say something aren't really worth listening to. Oh, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the 411 TV is here. Hey, hey, hey. And Stephanie Roberts. And um, she said earlier that she wanted to hear about this. Totally agree with you, Eileen. Oh, Stephanie, high five. I got a new friend, y'all. Stephanie, what's up? <laughs> so um, make it easy and remove the barrier so everyone has access. And, you know, it's. I got to be honest, as much as I love podcasting and, and the whole concept, it is not the end of the world because I know I lived through it with all the content that I had over on Blab. I broadcast every day for 365 days plus, you know, people are talking about challenges. That's the kind of challenge I want to see somebody do. Go live every day for a year. <laughs> That's a challenge. I remember that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So these little 31 day challenges, damn. I, I'm All like, right. oh, well, mm -hmm. uh, that ain't nothing. <laughs> so, I, I think the key element, Eileen, uh -huh. is the time. It's not even so much intimidation. It's the time it takes to get started and get rolling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's why I like the idea of the five minute segments. If you want, you could just make a five minute segment and that's your podcast for the day. That's it, Larry. Hi. And you're not just a pretty face. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I've agreed with most of what you got, but you're what, what I, th I think you're doing is you're creating a podcast. You're, you're editing what you've done in Anchor, but you're still creating a, your own podcast, even though the content was created on another platform. It's the same as if I sat down at my desk and narrated something through Adobe Audition. Yeah, but the, the same thing. but the difference is... But you're engaging on a social component, on a social platform. Other voices, exactly. Right. Not so, just me sitting here. This is why I was, you know, like getting disillusioned with podcasting because I'm like, I'm just sitting here at my computer and I'm going into audacity and adding it out. Oh my God, that was driving me nuts. <laughs> so now I can deal with the, and uh, because I got other voices coming in there. And if I want to, I just add a little background music if it gets really bad. So you can add other people's comments on audio wise into your podcast. Yes. They Do call they into your they call into your station. That's what I was saying. Or you might not have been here when I said that. Someone I misunderstood you. it. I didn't think that you could add someone else's comment to yes. to your podcast. Yes. 
what you can add is if I echoed you, say for example, and I didn't realize this, uh, Brian Fanzo did a really great um, episode, a segment. He did a really good segment, which he did later on included as his podcast. And I actually wanted to give him a big shout out and say how I loved what he was doing. He was embracing the platform, seeing the benefits of it and just, you know, taking a bull by its horns. And so then I said, I'm going to play this segment. So I echoed what he had said from this conference he attended, blah, 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 blah. Well, I don't have the option to include that. Mm -hmm. That's his segment. However, if Brian would have called into my station and said, Eileen, I think this, that, and the other, then I can include it, hmm. which is what I did. I had two questions that came in yesterday or my, or my segment yesterday, I should say my episode yesterday, two folks called in with blogging questions and these voices were included in my podcast. Cause when you call into someone's station, you're basically giving them your content yeah it Most says so <laughs> on anchor when you call in it says that it may be broadcast okay. so it warns them to begin with okay yeah. Yeah. yep so that that that's the advantage uh for me hmm. you know especially like the social component is important for you well yeah because it's not just a social component i think to me, the storytelling of a podcast, especially when you're talking about something boring, technical stuff like blogging, you know, it's, it's nice for me to say, I got a question the other day and blah, 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 blah. This is how you do it. Right. Exactly. But when you have this guy call you, he's got this fantastic British accent. He's from London. However, he's black, you know, and he's leaving this question like, I saw your picture over on the SEO press. Wow. Okay. So you, as a listener, you're kind of like, okay, this is this guy's experience. He's actually researching SEO plugins. Now, really that would put you to sleep. Hmm. But when you hear someone else saying that this is what they're doing and they see me on the website, that gives him even more incentive, more reason to call in, leave me this great question, which led to two fantastic stories, which I would have never thought mm -hmm. to just sit there and record those two stories, which I think were fantastic. But he asked me the question. So. So it's also giving you content ideas as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And so you know, it's, an, it's just enhancing the storytelling aspect of it as well so you're not using it as your source for itunes you're using it to cultivate information that you then use quicktime to put into a quote i'm going to use this word real podcast and where it goes to libsyn that you now have control over and etc cetera, etc cetera. and it's going on my blog yep okay so, I, so literally i'm in i'm in there twice okay however if I ever decide, okay, I don't even want that to be an episode on Anchor. So, cause I'm, I'm, you know, right now I think I have five or six episodes, right? So I decide I don't want it to be on Anchor. As a matter of fact, let me show you really quickly what you're going do. and deleted. No, no, nope, you don't even have to do that. Oh, you don't even have to do that. Hang on. I'm going to show you really quickly. As soon as, okay. All right, so th these in pink here are my episodes from today. Now, when I get down here, this is from the last 24 hours. Okay, so this was everything I did yesterday and everything from the day before and so forth and so on, right? And Barb, I think that's you typing. Yeah. If you could mute, if you could mute, dear, while you're doing that. Okay, so see right here where it says August 2nd, right? I click those dots. And I say export, I get an email from Anchor with all my files for that day. Oh, that's cool. Okay. And then it'll just be one. Yeah. And I really should talk about that feature a whole lot more because I never have to. Now you got my attention. Now, oh, this, so, now this is a cool, now this is a cool tool to get information <laughs> that and do what you did and just send it over to, uh, yeah. Okay. And it's going to come with that with the little commercial. Right, that you just cut out. 
that you just trim off and guys it's so easy to trim off in quick time it's so easy i don't even need to show you you open the file in quick time you click edit trim and you move the handle just like you do when you're creating something uh i Instagram story or you know <laughs> you just move the handle and you just wait until he stops talking <laughs> and then you do drag it at the end and wait until he starts talking then you got a new file you download that file to your computer that's it now the okay. extra step that I do because of, of Lipson the way Lipson is set up that file still needs to be converted because it's really an M4A still needs to be converted to mp3 okay I pull it back into iTunes convert it to mp3 add the artwork add my little description tags blah 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 boom uploaded to Lipson so I never have to publish an episode through the anchor app I never have to create that podcast on anchor I can just go every day at the end of the day click those three dots and get all my files is there a way if somebody leaves you said how people can call into your show yes can they I, call in through the app okay can i export that yes that's part of it that's okay. part of what you'll get okay yep i think i just waited too long because i know jim cullison and sent me something and i don't see it now but that's why it's probably been more than it's probably long gone and, and so now is the time for me to talk about the interviews the interviews the only thing is uh, I'll give you the bad part first about the interviews okay it sounds like you're talking on the phone because essentially you are talk is it's in a phone line connection I think you can run it through Skype only if the person has a US based Skype number okay but it goes through and the person has to have a US based number that you're calling and you know they get a notification this is going to be recorded whatever you can conduct your interview and it can go as long as you want it to go as you know hours two hours three hours and then you can you know publish it if you want as an episode or do what I just showed you how to do click those three dots and get them to send you the file you actually can do and I did the demo this in the last anchor video you actually can go to the anchor web page view source code and grab the m4a files for any segment that you want okay Dave stop making a noise I'm don't, I'm don't you know how this podcasting thing works <laughs> I'm like how fast can I hit mute on my phone I'm, like, no, no, stop it, stop it. <laughs> I'm just teasing Dave because I rarely get a chance to tease him <laughs> so let's see if there's any other questions anything else um that you wanted to say Larry uh nope um right now i'm figuring out shout outs okay shout outs is really it, it's kind of complicated so and i want to know how you do the call so you for the call-ins you prep it right you record a segment saying and now we're going to hear from so and so and then you add the call in is that how it works you can but you don't have to yeah it's up to you like you know how a lot of people like this is a new style that a lot of people have on podcasts where the guest says something really, you know, really good during the interview. And that's the first thing you hear when you start listening to their podcast, right? Mm -hmm. Then you hear the podcast intro and then, right? You could do it that style if you want. You just start off your podcast with this call in. Because people who are on the app, they'll see that it's a call in. Okay. Let's see if I can show what one. Yeah, the it's a, but it's in very fine print on the bottom no, right no it's no, not it's a very fine print i'll okay. show you let's see if i can show you one and then okay, if you can go over out. shout outs for me that would be good too okay shout all right let me talk about shout outs while i'm getting the other thing up okay shout outs are just you somebody listened to one of your segments right but they didn't say anything they didn't applaud they didn't whatever but you're just like i'm gonna try to engage this person right so you say you click on a shout out and you say thanks so much so and so for listening to my segment please let me know if you got questions blah 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 but the only people that will hear that shout out are that person's followers yeah that person has to be following both of you to hear the shout out 
They have to be following both of you. Of okay. course, they're not going to hear it. If they're not following you, they yeah. won't hear it. But they right. also need to be following that person. So if that person's, you know, like just let's just say if Dave came on there and I gave him a shout out, but you're not following Dave, you're not going to hear it. Hmm. I'm not following Dave, so I will, though. <laughs> Well, I'm not even following him yet, so I can't even give him a shout out. <laughs> well, I could give him a shout out if he came and listened to some of my segments. It's um, I L E A N E. That's how you find me over there. <laughs> All right, uh, I found you. Okay, very good. Very Talk good. on the name, right? <laughs> so let's see. I can really. But can can I have a question? Okay, not? really quick. I just want to say chat room. I'm so sorry if I did not get a chance. I got so many questions from the panelists. I haven't had a chance to look at the chat room really quickly. So anyway, go ahead with your question, Barb. So I, I understand that we can have multiple accounts if we set up different email addresses. Is that true? I don't know. Honestly, I haven't done it. I'm going to assume that that's true. Yeah, that sounds true. Okay, I mean, yeah. now here's like I uh, I'm going to give you a real world example. I own balloonignews.com and I'm setting it up. I've owned it since way back in the 90s. But we have the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta coming up. And I have some volunteer mobile journalists that I'm going to put out on the field. And could I have a channel for ballooning news that all of those people on that team call into that one channel and can report? No. Right now, they don't have multiple users for one account. On one in account. fact, and I only know that because somebody asked that question. The girl, mm -hmm. uh, there's two um, community managers. One is Maya. So if anybody wants to ask a question, you can ask Maya. And Faiza just started like a week and a half ago. So. Uh, she'll pick certain questions that she will read out. I mean, well, she will play the call in and then she'll answer the question. So someone just asked that question about two weeks ago. And so that's why I know the answer to that question is no. It's only for the one person, your phone. So now, Larry, really quickly, this is an example of a call in. Notice the person's name is there. If you want to click on, like this happened to be Angelica Whetstone from the Gen X Tech. She runs a Facebook group called Anchor Boss Babes. However, men can join the group too, which I just found out. I think she just changed the rules on that. Anyway, so if you want to, you can click her name. So let's I'm not say seeing it on the screen, Eileen. Oh, I'm so sorry. Duh. What's in screen sharing? There you go. So this is what the difference is when you're looking at a call-in. Um, the Gen X Tech, which is Angelica Whetstone, if I click that, and it's a little tricky sometimes, I would take me to her profile. But see how you it's in a box as opposed to this. This is what a regular episode would look like. Can you do that again? Oh. Okay. I feel like I'm at an this, optometrist. Better this way, better that way. This is the call in. This okay, is someone else. See, it's in a box. Got it. How how do you get that? How do you share that or export it? Oh, uh, it, when you say share it, if I just wanted to share it on Twitter or share well, it to my audience. Well, I, yeah, I want to get it off my phone onto something that I can put into my podcast. Then you would do the old school method of using the view source code on the website. So uh -huh. stop screen sharing that. Got it. I just want to get that one episode. Okay. Hang on. Now I got to move things around because windows are all. I big. thought you said that the Collins were included in the podcast. In yes. The but that's not what he, that wasn't his question. Oh, it would be, but if he just wanted to get that one call in. Oh, if I was using it to get information and I'm like, cool, I got this call in. I wanted to, I guess I could, I could put it in my episode and then export the episode. That would probably be the easier right. way, right? Yeah. Well, no, actually that would be a more difficult way on. because now you've made an episode. Okay. okay. This is the easier way. And I'm only showing because this would be only for super techie people view page source, which I showed in the last um it's a hack 
version of the podcast. I mean, the, the last episode where I showed how to use Anchor, I didn't know about that export feature that I just showed, which was a really quick way. But here, you go to the source code, right? Don't you love gobbledygook? This is worse than an RSS feed for a podcast, right? So you're going to Command F or Control if you're on PC. Right. You're going to go dot M for A. That's going to bring up all the audio files. You're going to look for the one. Let's just say this was the one. You just right. go here, you highlight it, you shortcut click, go to, that opens it up in a new window. Now, let me give and you boom. a little bit of Well, now you can see that wasn't the one, but right. you, you can just, you can easily see the titles here. Like this one here is how I met Yoast of Valk, AKA Yoast. Right. All right. So if I wanted to really keep looking, I'll just keep going. Oh, here it is. It's from newbie blogger right here. See newbie blogger. So then I would just get that HTTPS all the way to the M4A. You don't get the, um, quotation marks. Cause that's right. going to be a URL. Hi there, Eileen. This is a Okay. You like that? I think. And then you just click the download. You're like an anchor ninja now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to change the title of this video to how to be an anchor ninja. There you go. <laughs> how to hack anchor. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, you can repurpose this content so many different ways. And like I said, yeah. you can use your repurposed content. You know, I had, oh, a couple of videos that I did for anchor. I didn't use upload them to YouTube. I was showing folks how to use the web clipper. Okay. Where did I put that video? Maybe I'll put it on Facebook. I'm not sure, but it was like a three minute video. I just entered that URL from Facebook. It extracted the audio. I posted it. So many people echoed that thing. I can't even tell you because people don't know about the web clipper, you know? So they were just like, Miss Eileen shared the web clipper and because I explained during the uh, video, because I knew that it was going to be later on in audio, I was a little bit more, uh, I used a little bit more alliteration because I knew people wouldn't be seeing it, but then I also gave a link. So if people wanted to come over and watch it, they could watch and see it in action. So yeah, uh, I pretty much, I am really loving this platform. <laughs> I can see that. You know, and I mean, <laughs> Only, it's only two days out of the week that I have super cute Saturday. So on those other days when my hair is not even done, <laughs> just open up my phone. That's the great and, thing about podcasting, right? <laughs> yes. I get to take all advantage of all those things I've been missing for the last year and a half or more. So I'm having fun, you know, and you know, of course they could shut down next month, but mm -hmm. hey, that doesn't mean I'm, not going to enjoy and take uh, the benefits of the fact that it is there now and it's still small it's not crowded with there are a lot of marketers over there i will say but it's so easy to avoid people They're starting to come in they gotta ruin it okay that's one that, that is another bad point if you're somebody who is very into the statistics you don't see who follows you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't have a way of seeing how many followers you have, but you see who engages. So you see how many people give you applause or leave comments or echo, or of course the call-ins. So then you know, they're following you, right? <laughs> because they're listening to your content. You see each, oh, and you can also see who listened to a segment. So I think that's really important to show even your old segments. So right here, I can click on the viewers list. So, I mean, you can't beat that. So I know these people are following me because they wouldn't find my segment without following. And this is where I can quickly give them a shout out. So like this person, Ray cast, I have no idea who that is, but they sound like they might be a podcaster, right? Ray cast. They're listening to my content. I may go follow them. I'm not going to do it right now because I just don't know what's, what kind of content they have over there. I don't want you guys to see stuff you can't see. You know Keeping a G. Saying? Keeping a G. Yeah. And, you know, I just love the fact that I can see the people. 
You know, people always are like, well, who are my listeners? Who's my audience? I don't know who my target audience is. I do. I, I know would, each. Go ahead, Bar go ahead, Barb. I'd like to add, I'm, I'm getting an echo. Are you guys? Yeah. Yeah, because Dave's over there playing with his phone. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Some, somebody else has another window open with the- It's uh, gone now. I don't hear it now. Okay. So for me, I am not a person who subscribes to iTunes and listens to podcasts on iTunes. But this appealed to me right away from the standpoint that, you know, I, I drive, I travel, and to be able then to actually have relationship-based connection to the broadcaster um because you're sharing this content over on facebook which is more where i'm present every day i mean like eileen i would listen to dave i would listen to larry i'd listen to i know you but that i'm actually to me i got excited about it because i know i have that long trip to make and i said finally i will listen because it's so easy i can just click and play and I'm not going to download iTunes and I'm not going to download all this other garbage and it's just click and play. And so that's a big deal at this, when you look at who is actually listening to this kind of stuff, who's actually listening, listening and watching at length, it's not the younger generation in general. They're still hooked on the music and they're still, you know, because they're still, we're pretty much at this stage in life, even getting down to the, the older end of the millennial, you're, you've got a family, you've got things going on. And it's, you know, a time of introspection and am I where I want to be at this time in life? So these coaches that come on with all their insight is good. And I don't see it now. If Dave went in, probably because I want to know more about podcasting, and because I'm just in love with Dave's voice, I'd probably just listen to Dave. But <laughs> the other thing is that I'm telling you, Dave, what really connected me to you was your music. The minute you started talking and playing, oh, I was like, oh, oh, yeah, right. no, 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 don't. You <laughs> but really, that's the real copyright. Now. Copyright. Yeah, exactly. Um, how you get your ideas. That's the creative the creative side. So I think there is a market there. I think, and I think that because of the way it's being introduced in shareability, because we are sharing directly to Facebook, we are sharing to, uh, and I think Twitter's got real issues, but I believe for the amount of time that I have left, and I, it took me a long time to get here to set, make these statements, but for the days that I have left in my life, my, a social platform base has to be Facebook overall just because of friends and family and global connections that are I have real life relationships with. Well, she's not here right now, but I'm giving a big shout out to Bonnie Frank because Bonnie is the one that told Stephanie about me and Stephanie has subscribed to the channel. She's getting the alerts. Woo -woo. So shout out to my girl, Bonnie Frank over there in Facebook land. <laughs> and I just want to see if what's the 411 had something with some of the big YouTubers promoting anchor, right? It won't be long before anchor gets crowded. Yeah. Cause I mean, you know, like I hear people that, um, when Tim or Roberto play back their call-ins, that's the first person thing someone says, so, I watch your YouTube video about anchor and I'm so glad you told me about it. This is just an amazing app, blah, 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 blah. You're wonderful. And you're the God of YouTube. <laughs> so yeah, it's, well, you know, it was the same way when, um, Brian Fanzo started talking about, Oh, and Dave, that's another thing I have to tell you about this app called echo. And I just didn't get a chance to record a message for you. It's a, um, social app for podcasts. You don't host your podcast there, but you find out what other people are listening to. Hmm. And you can do that on weekly web tools. It's called echo. So, so nice. it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll show you that one real quick too, while you guys are, are still talking. So any more thoughts, Larry, like on how you're going to use it and how come I haven't heard you record anything? 
Uh, you should look there today. Just recorded one, put it up. Oh, you are so slick, boy. I tell you, you got that in right <laughs> I was before. like, you know what? Eileen's going to say something about Anchor. And the other thing is, I can't. I don't know how to get rid of your request saying, I haven't heard from you in a while. You don't have to get rid of it. Once you once you it, broadcast, it sh I don't know if you stop, You should stop seeing it. I don't you, know. You I, maybe maybe I'll, I'll go check. Yeah. I mean, it was, that's it was the annoying whole... the hell out of me. So okay. I said, you know what? Let me put thing. Let me put one up so I can get her off my back. <laughs> let me explain what that what that means, guys. Same here, Larry. <laughs> oh yeah, I did it for Barb too. Let me explain what that means. Anchor is really smart. They they know that in order to get users that have signed up to come back and or people that have actually never broadcasted, they gave all of the users a tool to request that the person come back on. So you can go through or you can see who you're following, right? You go through your favorites list, you click on a profile and it'll say, listen, if they've published something in the last 24 four hours, but if not, it'll say send request or make a request. And you can hit that button and type in a little text to say, hey, I noticed you haven't broadcast in a while, or that's what I type. Or you might just say, where are you or whatever. And then they get that notification that says, Hey, your listeners want to hear from you. So I think that was a brilliant marketing plan because they're not sending out the notification, even though it's coming through the app, it's coming from your friend. So your friend is urging you or your listener. Maybe it's just, you know, not me and you, it's just, uh, I see something like maybe it was Gary V. <laughs> That's a joke that I would send him. A <laughs> <laughs> just, just say, for example, if I was a huge fan of Gary and then I would say, Gary, I haven't heard you cursing me out in a while. Come back over to the platform. <laughs> well, I can you, tell Gary. you, Eileen, that, that if you skip 24 hours, I'm going to be right on your butt. I, I use the I mean, scheduler. Like, where are you? And you know me, I, I'll use the <laughs> scheduler. If I think that I'm not going to be on there for 24 hours, I'll just use a scheduler. So see, this is how, this is why the web, the fact that they have combined that web piece with it is to me what makes it a winner. Because you never have to use the app if you don't want to. If you want to be a broadcaster, because we all know there's people that all they do is broadcast. You see them on Twitter all the time, right? Mm -hmm. You can just record everything you want right on your computer or get your old podcast or your old Facebook lives or whatever and just use that scheduler and post them up there. And you never even have to look at the app or engage with people if you don't want to. You could just put your message out there. Hmm. I, I had one question. I'm, I'm still a little blurry. Um, uh, you said the guy that sent you the thing about SEO, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh huh. How, he did that as a call, call, back, call, call back. and then you got that by digging through the code to get it, or there was somewhere. No, 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 no. You don't have to dig through code. No, 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 no. Right. Okay. Yeah. Let me How did you? Because that was my whole thing. Okay. You had me, and then all of a sudden we went to the one screen where we're digging okay. through the code. I'm like, wait right. a minute. We got, we got distracted. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's go back. No, wait, sorry. I'm not, I realize I'm not screen sharing yet this time, guys. That's all right. Going on purpose. I don't want y'all to see all the apps that I have on my phone. <laughs> She'll be like, "Why she got all those apps?" Okay, now I'm screen. I'm gonna go back to screen share. Okay. Because that's that was the part that got me excited. I'm like, "All right, I can use this for my question of the month and all sorts of other fun stuff." Okay. Oh wait, let me just see if maybe there maybe there's a call in. It would be nice. No, I don't have a call oh, here. Yet. Do you want me to call but in? If there was no, 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 you have to. That's okay. I have All an right. example to show you. But see here where it says that's this. Oh, Dave favored at my station. But let's say it would call in. It would be Dave Jackson called into your station. Or you have a call in from Dave Jackson, whatever. Then I would click this. This is where all your media happens, right? Where I could do an interview ah, or report or my call ins. Got it. So now they're just sitting there waiting for me. I can play them and just listen to them before I add them. Of course, you want to play them and listen to them so you can respond appropriately or so that you can record a segment ahead of time to say, Simon called in and he wants to know about vlogging versus blogging. And then play Simon's segment if I want. 
or I could just play Simon segment. Cause like I said, everybody can see it's a call in cause it's in that little box. Okay. So back me up a second. You're, you're recording an episode and then you play it in the app. No, a segment. Okay. There's the, let's get the terminology down. Okay. Pat. If I want to record a segment, I'll do it right now. In fact, Hey guys, I'm over on YouTube with Dave Jackson, Barb Tomlin, and Larry Snow. Come join me over there live. So now I get the opportunity to add background music if I want. Oh, let's say I'll, I'll just add one that I know would, should be fine. Take a listen to it if I want. Probably can't hear it because of the way I have everything set up. Then I give it a name. Um, and I know I didn't spell it right. Oh, no, I'm not love. I'm live. <laughs> okay. Love and live. And so now it's posted to my station. And they give you little prompts there, like get listeners. Like, I don't know what happens when I click that. I forget. Sorry. I, I blew it. I missed it. So now I'll go back to my, oops, station for the day. Remember when it's pink, those are the ones from today. All right, so it should be at the bottom of the list, right? Mm -hmm. so now if I wanted to share that on Twitter, I could share that on Twitter. Facebook. You can share it too, right? Right now. Or I can say, oh, I really don't want to hear it. I think I can delete it. Oh, the three dots instead of the share. Delete. I'm not going to delete it. I'm going to leave it there. I can later on change the title so I can take out that typo. Right. But how do you get the call in? I'm not sure. I'm so now when it. somebody, so now when somebody's on their dial, they will be on the homepage and they'll see me just like I just saw Angelica on her. Today's question of the day is and then I can listen to now, see, this is another thing that she's doing. She's repurposing her own content. So she, and you can tell because it's in the box. So she recorded this segment, but she doesn't want to record anything today. So she's just reposting it out to her own station. <laughs> Something that she said, I don't know. You can't tell when she said it originally. She knows. Okay. You still there, Dave? Look like you're frozen. Well, um, you are frozen. I'm still confused on how, how do you get the call in? Um, so, so he's asking about to download it in an episode, I think. Say like yeah, someone else is calling. Yeah, if somebody calls in, how do I get that? Into your episode or yeah. how do you download it to your computer? Well, when you say episode, you mean an, an anchor episode, right? And, and the episodes are the ones that go to iTunes. Once you've established a podcast, okay. the episodes go to iTunes. Yeah, because then I could export it, right? Well, from iTunes, well, that's the way I'm doing it, from iTunes, if it's an episode. Because that little trick that I showed you with the M4A files, that's yeah. only from your segments, not from your episodes. You don't have a web page. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out how to get the call-ins into some place I can use them. The one I just showed you, when you go to the website right. and you get the M4A, M4A files, okay. or, you don't have to do it that way. Or you have to wait until the end of the day and click those three dots and tell them to export your day. Yeah, because I was confused about that as well. Because in the beginning, you showed us that you this is your, I don't know if it was part of the workaround or whatever, but you uh, exported everything. And then when I asked you, does that include Collins? You said yes. Yes, it will. So they'll send me an email. Okay, so let's see. Let me go over to my inbox. And let's see if I can get it up before I, okay. There it is. It's right at the top. So hang on. Now, does that, does so, that push you into it? So when you say you only can export it like that if it's an episode? No. Okay. Every, so that's what we need to review then. Every day at the end of every day, you're going to get all of your segments, including call-ins, and interludes will show up there as some uh, your archive, so to speak. Okay, so you can download your archive for that day. But for the day, right. right. Okay. Correct. So that should help your day. Right. So Got then it. 
So then they send you the email. Don't laugh at how many emails I have there. Okay. And then when I click here to download the file. The audio you're about to hear was recorded in Anchor. So now y'all know what that little commercial sounds like. Right here. Or at anchor.fm. Good morning. Okay. So now everything, all everything is mixed in together. But I, but if you want to, you can extract right. whatever okay. you want. You know, you can trim it out because, I mean, for somebody like you who's tech savvy, who knows just how to go in there and edit the file and pull out the part you want, you can do it that way. Nice. Okay. Okay. That'll so, work. Yeah. All right, so we got some anchored ninjas in the house now. <laughs> Let's see if we got any in the chat room. <laughs> uh, you know, I like I said, guys, this is if you've never had a podcast before, you want to think twice before you decide that you're going to use Anchor, okay? Because with a free host always comes the price that you don't know if they're going to shut down. You want to really have a reliable host for your podcast, which would be Lipson, Blueberry, or Spreaker. The rest of them are out there. Don't ask me about which one. I haven't tried those. These are the ones that I've tried. Actually, I've never really used Blueberry. I just feel confident in endorsing them. I yeah, definitely a- endorse Lipson. And I always did, even before Dave started working there. I always <laughs> endorse well, doesn't Lipson have a really low end even to get in? I five thought, bucks. Yeah, it was like five bucks or something. Come on. That'll give you about a a, a, yeah, it'll give you about a hundred minutes of stuff if you're exporting at sixty four mono. So you know, and and um Spreaker. Now yeah. with that said about Spreaker, I did not like the fact that I went to Spreaker and I heard com- commercials playing before my I'm like, wait, I'm paying. Why do I have to listen to the commercials? You can turn that off. Oh, do you have it monetized though? You mean? I, I guess I do. I must. Maybe I do. Yeah, because they have that now. <laughs> if you want, they they'll put in ads in your stuff. They're not paying a ton. Right. I don't want. I, I don't want to listen to ads when I'm listening to my own stuff. <laughs> yeah. The last time I looked, I got paid um a penny for five listens. Oh wow. <laughs> and I was like, wow, that's that's not. I'm not gonna get rich on that. Okay, Stephanie is saying that she's on Lipson too. And Stephanie, I got I apologize. I forgot to tell you to tell us what your podcast is because I didn't realize that you had one. So just type the name of the podcast in there and somebody will go out there and find your link and we'll post that link. Anybody else have a podcast? Oh, and Andrew, I'm sorry, Andrew. Hi, Andrew. One of my Google Plus friends. I told you the Google Plus community is still tight. So on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I upload a video. Tuesday, I create a playlist. On Thursday, I do a podcast, right? Um, you could do it that way. That sounds like a plan. <laughs> you know, that's a lot of content, Andrew. 